So, good morning, everyone. I am Mario Gangemi, the chair of the MDTA Capital Committee and conducting this morning's meeting. I hereby call the meeting of the Capital Committee to order at 9 a.m. In accordance with the live streaming law, this meeting is being conducted via video conference and live streamed on the MDTA Capital Committee page. Do remind that all Capital Committee have their video active during the entirety of the meeting and that to minimize background noise that everyone on the line mute their phones unless of course you are presenting and then we ask you to also have your video and your audio on and then when you're done you can turn on your video off and put your audio on mute unless of course you're a capital committee member today there are no members of the public elected officials or media that are pre-registered to comment on today's meeting therefore we can move to agenda, agenda item number one which is the approval of open session meeting minutes of June 2nd, 2022. Move, Member have Cox. A motion? Member Cox Move. moves. I'll second. Member Gaines seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And I say that, was all, that was all of us, so that's unanimous. Now we'll move on to approval of HT 3017 BHT in tunnel fiber improvements. Sonia is going to talk to us. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Sonia Thomas, ITS and electrical engineering manager at Office of Engineering and Construction. Today I'm going to present the contract HT 3017 BHT in tunnel fiber improvements. The work to be performed under this contract is located at Baltimore Harbor Tunnel on I-895 in the Baltimore City. The project will install fiber optic cables through primarily existing conduit traceways inside the east and west tunnel bores, as well as the Fairfield Canton service buildings. These cables will serve as the new communication media that will replace the existing Bluehost communication cables in use by the Programmable Logic Controller, PLC, and SCADA system. So the contract is being procured using the invitation for bids capital construction method. The contract is funded 100% with total revenues. The engineer's estimate for this contract is $1,388,905. The MB goal is 15% with no sub goals. The VSB goal is 1%. Um, we do anticipate NTP for this contract in September 2022, and the contract duration is 395 days, so the construction completion will be in October 2023. We advertise the contract on February 17 this year, and the bids received on April 14. Uh, we received four bids on the contract. The low bid was submitted by McLean Contracting Company in the amount of $915,875. This low bid price was 34% um, below the engineer's estimate. We performed a bid justification and found the bid to be, bid to be acceptable. Uh, there was no bid protest or rejection. Uh, McLean Contracting Company has submitted an MPE plan with 15.07% MBE and 1% VSBE. The MB plan has been approved by MDTA Civil Rights and Fair Practices Office. So we're committing award of this contract to McLean Contracting Company. McLean Contracting Company have like an extensive history of work in Maryland and MDTA. They had successfully completed various projects with MDTA and other state agencies, and we have received positive references upon the contractor reference check. Um, we are seeking recommended approval from the Capital Committee to present this contract to full MDTA board in anticipation of approval for the contract award. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Anybody have any questions for Sonia? Um, not. I, I got a question. Um, Go forward. I know, I know McLean is a very Company contractor and cable, but uh, bridge and various water-oriented construction. But I didn't realize they did cable work. Is have they done cable work for us before? No, um, they are new to our electrical and communication projects, mm -hmm. uh, but they have did similar work for the other state agencies, and uh, they have provided the certified and qualified fiber technicians required for this job. Mm -hmm. so. Go ahead, Jim. 
Yeah. Hey, good morning, everyone. Jim Harkness, Chief Engineer. Um, I would just like to chime in that uh, um, as Member Gaines indicated, you know, McLean has a, a reputation in the industry. And um, so, uh, you know, the electrical slash fiber communications was not necessarily something that we um, had associated with McLean before, but um, it seems that um, they've uh, been able to hire a, a number of uh, staff from uh, some other uh, companies, and it looks like it, this may be a sort of a, a, an area of growth for McLean. I mean, I don't think anything is that complicated about cable. We'll get it done yeah. with other. And we appreciate the low price. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, okay. I will, any other questions? Is there a motion to approve for sending to the full board? So moved. So Second. moved by Member Gaines, second by Member Cox. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All of any opposed and sound, sound like it was a unanimous. So thank you very much. Now we'll move to item number three, which is MDTA 2021-02A, which is the Comprehensive Environmental Compliance and Engineering Services. And Peter is going to talk to us about that. Oh, there you are, Peter. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to be presenting on uh, contract 202102A. This is a comprehensive environmental compliance and engineering services. Uh, MDTA needs to be compliant with environmental regulations. Uh, this includes capital project permitting and mitigation related to stormwater, natural resources, and large storage tanks. Includes uh, operational permitting to maintain stormwater and natural resources assets along roadways campuses and maintenance facilities. There are also oil control program permits related to former underground storage tanks. Uh, the stormwater remedial program provides uh, assistive preservation of stormwater practices and drainage systems. Uh, engineering contracts are necessary to comply with these requirements and maintain environmental assets. Current contracts will exhaust funds after the initiation of this contract. Uh, the scope focuses on environmental compliance for projects and operations. Uh, this involves conducting environmental inventory, compliance inspections, uh, assessments and designs, regulatory permitting support, guidance on regulations, uh, geographic information system, GIS, uh, development and management, and report preparation. Activities can include desktop and field studies, research, preliminary and uh, final design services. This contract is uh, being procured under the competitive sealed proposal request for uh, proposed methods with a graded technical and cost proposals. Uh, this method is most favorable as it allows for the proposal committee to review the credentials and the qualifications of uh, engineers uh, in our standing our inspection program. There are no allowance items for this contract. Uh, the estimate of 12 million is based on past environmental contracts. Uh, the estimate increase due to the expansion of our inventory of environmental assets and increased complexity of environmental compliance. This was advertised uh, July 8th, 2020. Award letters were issued on April 15th of 2022. Eight technical proposals were received from the following teams. Uh, joint Venture WSP and Prime, Joint Venture JMT Gannett Fleming, uh, Joint Venture RKK and Century, AECOM, uh, Joint Venture of EA McCormick Taylor, uh, Joint Venture of Wallace Montgomery KCI, Joint Venture of WBCM and Dewberry, and Tri Venture of GPI, Brutus and Stantec. Um, technical scores reveal these four firms were uh, recommended for award in order uh, WSP Prime for $4 million, JMT and Gannon Fleming for $3 million. RKK and Century for three million and AECOM for two million. The four firms not awarded requested a briefing and no objection or protests were introduced. Uh, MD goal is twenty percent, twenty three percent, with sub goals of seven percent African American owned firms, six percent Asian American owned firms, and ten percent for women owned firms and a 1% for veteran owned small business enterprise. 
All price negotiations have been successfully completed with MBOs meeting and or exceeding the requirements of this contract. Awardees uh, were on previous or current MDTA environmental services contracts. NPP is anticipated in August of uh, 2022. Each contract duration is set for five years. We are seeking recommended approval from the Capital Committee to present this contract to the full MDTA board in anticipation of approval for a contract award. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Anybody have any questions? I, I, I got a question. Who, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed. Who is WSP? Uh, they were um, formerly uh, Parsons Brinkerhoff. Right. Oh. Oh, parts and drink are off. OK. Right. And the other qu question I have is that you advertise this July of 2021 and we're just getting around to awarding it a year later. Is that is that normal in engineering contracts? I don't remember being taken that long on most of these things. No, that's not not typical. Uh, this is a very modest contract. No controversy involved, just. Just oh, not on my end. Yeah, OK, thank you. Anybody else have any questions or want to make a motion to approve to send this to the full board? I'll make a motion yep. for approval. All right, Me member ends or moves and moves in favor. I second. second. Member gains second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? All right. Looks like we got everybody. All right. So now we can move to uh, learn a little bit more about Carson's Run. Looks like Peter is going to stay on the line. So, Peter, tell us yes, about Carson's Run. That sounds like an exciting project. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen here to do the PowerPoint. Great. Hold on here. Let's see. Hey, I got a question. How do you spell Carson? Yes. Yeah, let me get to the top here. It's C-A-R-S-I-N-S. -S. It is an S-I. OK, I always thought it was S-O. No, no, yes. it's, that's right, Lee. I, I have okay. a project there, and it, it is it's spelled Good, correctly. Good, you have it right. <laughs> it's spelled correctly. Well, thanks uh, for giving me the opportunity to, to uh, talk about um, this environmental feature. It's a uh, this has really been a, a big growth for us is this uh, natural resources mitigation. Um, so I'll go ahead and jump in. So I'm gonna give you guys an overview of what uh, mitigation is and uh, highlight this Carson's run. We're gonna kind of touch on how the assessment and design and, and uh, also touch on uh, how this is one of many uh, stream restoration projects that happened in just in the last five years. So this is a uh, compensatory mitigation uh, falls on our natural resources program and is, it's geared towards addressing unavoidable impacts to natural resources uh, typically from our capital projects and one of the things you resources that are protected are streams wetlands and uh, forests uh, the key permitting agencies are maryland department of environment but over in the wetlands and waterways program and as well as uh, u.s army corps of engineers this is one of the things where these are a joint permit um, so when we look at uh, doing stream restoration, what is the goal? Well, we're trying to reduce the lateral migration of, of the stream, uh, re reconnect the stream to its floodplain and adjacent wetlands to you know, make it more stable and functional, as well as uh, create some uplift. Uh, the agencies do look for you know, improving the habitat, like fish habitats, uh, and improving water quality. So this is not any different like a lot of engineering projects. We know we do an assessment, uh, we do a geomorphic survey. We look at the cross section of the stream. Uh, we do a survey at the stream profile. Uh, we look at the pebble counts to see what kind of material is moving by the stream. Uh, we also have to look at the fact that it's uh, got other resources as forests, wetlands. Um, they also have a keen eye on uh, invasive species. And there's a method to do what we call a rapid bioassessment to kind of see the health of the habitats and uh, water quality. So when you do the design, uh, it's, it's, it follows traditional phases. 
uh, concept, but the uh, agencies call it phase one mitigation plan, and then uh, semi-final is phase two mitigation plan. Uh, and then we, as typical projects, we do plans, specs, and estimates, construction, uh, and then uh, post-construction monitoring. Uh, typically now the agencies are requiring not five, but 10 years of uh, formal monitoring. So let's go into uh, Carson's Run. That's a great uh, project to highlight. Uh, if you've ever been up to the Rifkin Stadium off 95, you can just go to the end of the property there and you can uh, actually access the site. And it goes down to uh, our right-of-way. In the grand scheme, this has some serious issues. Uh, I've seen worse, but this had uh, quite a bit of problems where a failed storm drain outfall, a failed concrete ditch, uh, stream bank erosion. Think about the lateral movement. Uh, for example, like this tree here is uh, not a matter if it's a matter when it was going to fall, which then, you know, uh, further escalates the issues. Um, and when we say lack of stream form, you know, think of a nice S bends and uh, uniform, uh, whereas this uh, creates a lot of erosion and it's very, uh, you know, chaotic stream. Uh, form. So in the design, we uh, actually went to great lengths to, to armor the or strengthen the stream bed uh, and then lay back some of the slope to get reconnect with the floodplain. Uh, you know, when we have our storm drain and we actually, you know, put drop structures where the original pipe will fall into a manhole, drop down and then safely discharge. Uh, we replace like concrete uh, channels with, uh, you know, more natural stream uh, ditches. Uh, and basically we're trying to reestablish the stream bed and you can see there's uh, you know a combination of riffle pool glides that's a very common format but each stream has its own character so one of the things in construction is we're really trying to avoid you know making even more impacts just for the sheer uh, mitigation project itself um, and you know we have to use some uh, specialized equipment but you'll see you use a lot of uh, natural materials they'll even harvest some of the trees that we take down they can become part of the weirs. Uh, sometimes a root mat can be uh, put into the bank to uh, for stabilization instead of you know using more rock. You can see the it's quite a bit of, of uh, grading on the overbank. So this this is a pretty big grading project. And you can see it's actually it's coming along pretty well here. This is about a year between year one and two. Uh, it's becoming quite established. It's showing also some wards where we have to kind of uh, do some adaption, uh, but the, the key was the vegetation established uh, along the stream, uh, in the overbank. Uh, we're, we're having to monitor uh, the stream stability and the habitats that are created. One of the highlights is that this was uh, about a thousand feet of stream restoration and when you do the grading over banks, you get to create some new wetlands also. Uh, these credits were used for the I-95 uh, ETL extension. Uh, and when we do these uh, type of projects, we have to get a protective easement. And one of the things that we like to highlight, this was a re really a, a pretty neat project. We used a lot of natural materials and it's actually a nice amenity. You can actually stroll down there from um, Ripken Baseball. I've been in many games up there with my son in past years, and you got a lot of time on your hands. It's a nice little walk. Uh, this project was awarded in 2020. The contractor was uh, 6M Corporation, and the bid amount was 800,000. Uh, completion date was uh, January 2021, and uh, we were able to uh, get an, an MDOT Environmental Excellence Award uh, for this for this project. Uh, but I like to also highlight that uh, this is one of many of projects, a stream restoration project. Uh, prior to this, we had the White Marsh Run, which is uh, basically a big theme park. We had stream restoration, wetlands, reforestation, and that one is now coming to a close and has been a great experience on how to maintain sites and how to close them out. So we've created a, a program to track all these uh, Another one that came from the ETL projects is Potasco River Tributary. 
uh, which actually included some system preservation for culvert, and we have up there in the gunpowder. Uh, but uh, one of the more unique ones is going to be like Belvedere Road, uh, where we have a uh, sole source, and similarly to the Jones Falls Eccleston site, where uh, we had a full delivery approach, and also the nice bridge has stream restoration. So we we're going gangbusters on on monitors and we're using a, a GIS approach to track them uh, They include elements of the stream, uh, wetlands, uh, trees. So it's uh, basically being tracked similar to other environment assets like uh, stormwater or best management practices. Any questions? Any Peter, questions you might... from the uh, members? Go ahead. Oh, Go ahead yeah, um, you said you had you had uh, storm drain failures. What kind of what kind of failures were, were you seeing? So typically with a stream restoration, you, you know, you get the lateral movement or under scour. So basically you lose the, the end wall uh, and then maybe another pipe. Uh, so basically it's it, it's kind of a domino effect. If you once you lose the head wall end wall, then use that pipe uh, in this like Baltimore City where we have a lot of severe flash flooding. You can start losing, uh, you know, another pipe stepping, but uh, by and large, it's just basically the the outfall. The pipes themselves aren't breaking, but I guess the water is undercutting. Headphones. Yes, exactly. And if you lose, not, not lose it down. Any any other questions or comments from from the members? You might you might say, Peter, you might say how far and where the outfall is from Parsons Run, how far it goes and where it ends up. OK, might. yeah. For the, I'm going to be doing a uh, lunch and learn here for MDTA and I'll probably expand, uh, like you said, to help people really lock in because everyone understands the storm drain. Right. Well, Peter, thank you for presenting this. I think it's uh, an example of, of we do a lot of really good things when we do something that's benefiting the environment. I think that's something we need to sort of toot our horn a little bit about. So I think this was a cool project and something I've been you know familiar with on other other projects. So I'm kind of kind of excited to hear a little bit more about it. So thank you very much for doing that. Great. No, thank you for uh, hearing me out. Thanks. Very good. Take care. Is there uh, with the group that's on here right now? Is there any other project you guys want to hear a little bit more about? down the road it's pro probably about time for a, maybe a nice bridge update sometime soon but is anything else anybody else wants to hear more about kind of like what we just did i think at some point uh member dan zemi we want to hear on the atl as as far as project i know we're getting a little bit of an update but uh, jim maybe give us you know a time frame are we on or off uh, the time frame as far as where we are yeah, so 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 more kind of like what we just did, kind of give an update yeah, with yeah. a little more mm -hmm. detail. I mean, I know you do the, right. I know you do the big projects, Jim. But since we're in the capital committee, we we like to hear the we like to hear the nitty gritty stuff. Yeah, sure thing. So just to let you know, um, you saw at last month's board meeting that uh, 895 Bridge Project won an award. So our plan for yeah. August was was to make a presentation to you sort of um, similar to this presentation, recapping the 895 bridge project. Uh, cool. Then Very we cool. also had plans for um, on the ETL program. We had uh, completed three overpass projects and we have a, a fourth under construction or actually two more under construction, fourth and fifth under construction. So we were going to um, sort of uh, package those projects together. So sort of the overpasses that are incorporated into the ETL program and and make a presentation to you in September on those. Great. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Appreciate yes. that. Terrific. Any other any other thoughts or comments before we before I ask for the motion to adjourn? Then make I guess I'll adjourn. All right, Member Cox motions to adjourn. Is there a second? A second. Member Gain second. Usually no discussion needed on those. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.
Have a All good right, one. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a great, thank you. safe thank weekend. Thank you, Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye.